So we've seen before that any vector can be re represented in any of three ways. It can be in Cartesian form, it can be in magnitude and direction, or it can be defined as a magnitude along a line. We did that in 2D, now we're doing it in 3D. In two dimensions you will sometimes add vectors without changing them into Cartesian form. We use the law of sines and cosines. In three dimensions, in general, what we're going to do is we're always going to move to Cartesian form. What I want to talk about right now is magnitude and direction for a three-dimensional object, three-dimensional vector. Magnitude and, three magnitude and direction in three dimensions gives you a magnitude, obviously, and two angles. The problems in your book are going to look like this. They're just going to have a vector and two angles given to you. The trick is that this can be specified in one of two different ways. You can specify this by using a projection on a plane or with direction cosines. You need to be able to figure out which one is which and how to get that into Cartesian form. So the first one we will look at is projection in a plane. Projection in a plane looks like this. Essentially you've got an extra line right here and you're measuring the, the projection, like if you put a real bright light up at the top and you've shown it down, this would be the shadow of the vector on the plane. So this vector is not in the YZ plane, it's sticking off at some sort of angle and this T that you see here is what you would have projected onto the plane. The two angles you have here are measured with respect to that T and this axis. So I can look at this triangle or that triangle and if you make them flat you can see that both of these are right triangles. So this one is the theta triangle that's here and this gives you the Z component of your vector. So you're moving this into Cartesian form so that you can probably add them up or something like that. Once you get this vector into that triangle, this gives you the z component, and this triangle gives you the x component and the y component. That's an x. Typo, this is an x. So these, but these two components, the x and y components, are with respect to this t here. So this line from that triangle gives you the other two components. So that's projection in a plane. Please note that these can be projected onto any plane. So this is projected onto the xy plane, but it doesn't have to be. It can be projected back onto the yz plane. Don't memorize these formulas. What you need to do is draw the triangles and figure out what your components are. The other way to do this is with direction cosines. Direction cosines takes this vector and for each of these three angles, they're measured between one of the coordinate axes, the positive coordinate axis, and the vector itself. So you've got these three angles, alpha, beta, and gamma. Sometimes we call them theta x, theta y, and theta z. It doesn't matter. These are the angles measured between the vector itself and the positive coordinate axis. So these can be bigger than 90 degrees. These are, these are whatever these triangles are. As you do this, note that none of these three triangles, none of these blue triangles are in any of the planes. So this, this blue triangle is sort of tilted this way, and this blue triangle is sort of tilted toward you out of that back plane, and this one is sort of rotated around like this. So these three angles, if you drew just the triangles, you'd have alpha, beta, and gamma like this. So this triangle, this component right here, fx, is, gives you the f, the magnitude of f times cosine of alpha, that's this coordinate projection. Remember that if you have orthogonal axis systems, you can project onto a line, any line, the for, projection of the force onto the line, that's what this is. So it's not projection in a plane, it's a projection of this force onto each of the three axes. Now the nice thing about this is that this because it's a projection on each of the axes, all of these are f cosine alpha, f cosine beta, and f cosine gamma. So once you understand what it is, moving direction cosines into Cartesian form is really easy. It's just the cosine of each of the angles. Now let me go back for one second and say, what did people tell you that we were going to, what did I have to give you? I had to give you a magnitude and two angles. Well, this is three angles. So what's the extra thing? The extra 
relationship between alpha, beta, and gamma is that cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared beta plus cosine squared gamma equals 1. So you will see that in the notes, that you have this extra relationship between these three angles. All I have to give you is 2. So you have to first solve for the other one, and then write the cosine of each of the angles to figure it out. And last but not least, we have the major question, how do you tell them apart? You've got these two possibilities, and now you've given a problem, how do you figure out which one you have? Do you have a projection and a plane or direction cosines? There are a couple things to look at. What are the angles measured to? If you're looking for direction cosines, each of these three angles is measured between the vector and the axes. And the other one is that a projection in a plane always has this extra line in it somewhere. So you'll still have a force in two angles, but they are measured to the projection line T, not to the axes themselves. So when you get one of these, you're probably only going to be given two of them, but once you've got them, you can find the third. And here, in either case, draw the triangles and figure it out with basic trig. Thanks.